Hey guys, <clears throat> it's me Muhammad Ali here live inside the Facebook group of Digital Think. Uh, with me here is Chad uh, Wyatt. Is that how you say it, the last name? Yes. Excellent. Who is the founder of uh, the profitable plugins uh, uh, company and of which is now one of the, you know, custom developed basically based on the <laughs> recommendations that we gave to him for digital things, you know, uh, deals that we, we bring here, including Tomba, which, you know, helps you find emails, but you don't know where to find them from. So this is going to be one of these, you know, tools that we're trying to, to you know, uh, bring to you guys tonight. And here is uh, uh, Mr. Chad, who's going to talk about it, you know, how it works, all of that, give us a walkthrough of the tool, you know, and then we'll talk about the deal structure, all that stuff. So uh, welcome to the, to, to the group, Mr. Chad. Thank you very much. Yeah, glad to be here. Um, yeah, I was referred by a friend um, to you. And so I joined the group a while back and was looking for a while. We communicated, you know, and uh, you were kind of on a, a break for a while. And then, uh, but yeah, now here we are. We did a bunch of work over the past <laughs> month or plus on this right. to get it ready for uh, for the group here. Um, <laughs> And so I've been happy to happy to work on it. It's been a lot of fun, and and Muhammad's been very good about uh, giving direction and you know what, what good good high standards for uh, for products. So that's been good to work with you on that. So um, so so the quick question that a lot of these guys the first thing they 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 they, they before we even get to the product itself they say, who are you? What's your mm -hmm. experience with SaaS? What have you done in the past? You know. What do you yeah. know about these things? Like, how can we trust you? This is all the questions that come in all the time. So I just wanted yeah. to uh, give you a chance to tell them who you are. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I've been a developer for over 20 years. Uh, made my first money online. Uh, at, I think it's 1999 um, with uh, an affiliate program for uh, Corey Rudel marketing tips. Uh, he passed away years ago, but um, some, some people know of him. Anyway, um, uh, of course I've done many things over the years. I've been a professional developer for uh, this, pretty much this entire time. Uh, I, I fell into developing uh, WordPress plugins because uh, while well, I started with WordPress um, back when it was, really new and that people was, were still making decisions say between WordPress and Joomla and Drupal and things like that. And it seems like WordPress has been the clear winner for in that, in that category. And then of course, uh, millions of users and, and plugin users and that sort of thing. So, um, and then I really love developing things for people in uh, local business marketing. You know, right. I, I know that it's really, um, you know, it's hard to owning a business and um, and getting customers in the door and that sort of thing. And so anything to do with marketing uh, is just has been something I've always been interested in, especially toward toward local businesses. But uh, could be any kind of online marketing. Uh, I developed uh, a plug in uh, SMS plug in about 10 years ago now. Uh, that was kind of my first major, I would say, uh, release of a of a piece of software for WordPress, and so um, thousands of users for that, and uh, learned learned a lot in the process, learned a, a lot of things not to do right. uh, to build a sustainable business, and so. Um, but I've supported that same plugin exists today and has continued development. So, uh, in fact. This plugin, this software we've created, is uh, the heart of it has been around for I think about nine years. You know, the idea of uh, connecting with Google Places API, right? And um, that's been around. I think you've seen it uh, for around for a while. Ten years yeah. ago, I use your plugin yeah. like I don't even remember seven years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, continue to develop and support all my plugins that people uh, that people use today and. Um, I'd say there's a couple that people often tell me that they've built their entire business around, you know, this thing that I created, you know, and that's, it really, it, it's a good feeling when I hear that from people, you know, that right. I've impacted them in some way that that's helped them. And so it's helped them as a consultant, usually, and they're consulting with 
a local business. And so they're helping many local businesses through that, right. that software. Right. So, um, so yeah, I've also developed a larger scale, uh, websites through other clients, uh, with millions of visitors a month. And so I, I've dealt with like high traffic, high volume and the demands that come with that, right. um, different, um, you know, SaaS applications. I, I consult on other, other things, uh, currently, uh, uh, actually I have an insurance company client that, uh, with a lot of users. So, um, but my heart and my love is, uh, within the WordPress arena and that's always fun for me to do. And that's really the long-term, uh, vision that I have for, you know, for my business. So, uh, that's why I'm working with you. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's a good, uh, introduction, a very comprehensive one. So, um, so we're talking about this, uh, this local lead, you know, uh, scanner. We, I'm pretty sure some of them have seen the preview of how it works. But for those of them who didn't see, let them hear it and see it from you firsthand because you're the guy who made it, who designed it. You, you're the guy who coded it, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I did all of that. So I guess I'll share my screen. We'll walk mm -hmm. through uh, kind of a brief overview. We won't go into quite all the details. Let's see here. Yeah. And um, are you seeing my screen now? Uh, yep, I can see a screen. Okay. okay, great. All right, so I've already, you know, I've got the, I've got it set up already. I'll, I won't go through all that, but it, right. I mean, there are settings here. It will guide you when you first install the plugin. It will uh, prompt you for the, you know, the information it needs to get set up. And the first thing is actually the, the key, the license key to use and, you know, to run the plugin. Um, and so that will be asked for you enter that with your email address and that gets um gets you set up and then um you'll also be asked for the google api key uh, there'll be a little bit of different interface it's like for, uh, everything else is removed so you see just that you know this is the next step you get that entered and you're and you're right. going to go there there's instructions here there's a link to a document from google about getting your api key i did a a, a video if you click there's several links throughout here the, that go to the tutorial video mm -hmm. um, so that uh, it, it, I guide you step by step through, you know, through the process. And because really the hardest part about this whole thing is getting your Google API key. Right. Uh, Google, Google is not really famous for, you know, having very uh, user friendly interfaces, I don't think, but, uh, but it's not hard. And I, I go step by step through it. I use a very, I use a brand new clean Google account and I go get my Google API key. And then um, it's only a couple steps, but it's just not super intuitive. And then um, then you need to, you know a couple other tweaks, and you're good to go. Um, then uh, the other thing, you, it's not it's not 100 percent, you know, required, but you do want um, to use, I would say, Twilio for <laughs> your. Uh, they provide a couple services that are wrapped into this uh, plugin. Right. And the first the first thing is. We do a phone type lookup as we're scraping these, you know, grabbing these leads, and we uh, you can determine is this phone number a landline or a mobile number. Um, now, if you don't care about that, then you don't need, and you don't need the other piece of this will be voicemail uh, broadcasting. So, if you're not interested in knowing what the type of phone number is and knowing and uh, being able to send a voicemail to those phone numbers, then you don't actually need uh, the Twilio settings here. Um, one other thing I do want to point out is we did end up going with Signal Wire as a backup for right. Canadian phone numbers because, um, <laughs> of course, I mean it's good because you're testing, you're going to search in Canada. So uh, there's only a few places where Twilio can't work uh, as far as phone types, and C Canada is one of them. So um, we did find another provider. I had already been working with Signal Wire. They're kind of a competitor to Twilio. Uh, they have a phone lookup service and it does provide data on Canada. So uh, that is there and you can just basically set up, you know, an account with them, plug that information in and you'll be good to go on Canadian phone numbers. Right. Um, all right. So um, let me take you back to the front end here. Let's look. I've done a few uh, scans just as demonstrations already, but uh, uh, I live in Florida, so um, uh, I found that there a lot of the tourism type, you know, niches or whatever, 
uh, I'm interested in around here as potential clients because uh, they do need help, especially with COVID and all that the last year and things are picking back up, but um, so there's some opportunity there. But um, so we got both tours. I did one for hair salons. I did one for real estate agents. Think of that's available to query on. I'll take you through uh, this one as an example, which I've already run. So I already have a, just a handful of records here. Uh, and I ran the query. Uh, I just typed in um, uh, the title is whatever you want. Right. The query is what you're searching for. You know, so in this case, it's actually the same thing. So I can type in vote tours again. And then um, one of the options in here. So this is where this is one of the big additions or very handy addition to what used to be the old way that I was doing things, which was I'd have to, in order to find all the records in a certain area, I would have to search by zip code because the limitation on Google Places API is it will only return a max of 60 records for each query uh, based on location. So with these boat tours, it's not as big of a deal because there's just not as many of them. But if I say go to real estate agents, um there are more real estate agents than 60 in the zip code you know so you're going to hit or in a in a city i should say um so if i say search just on uh real estate agents uh, and i was just looking at for example uh say miami <laughs> you're going to hit there's hundreds and hundreds of them in miami but if i just search on miami then it's going to i'm only going to get 60. Uh, so the way around that uh, was I would have to search by zip code. So I'd, uh, I would search, say, I'll just use the zip code in my area. I'd have to search by zip code, pull all the real estate agents in that uh, zip code, run it, and then uh, do it again. You know, So I'd type in another one and let it run again and wait for it to finish. It only takes a minute or so for each zip code. But that was kind of cumbersome. I'd have to go get a list of all the zip codes, type them in each time and all that sort of thing. So uh, what we added here was a way to def define locations that you can reuse. And so I live in Pinellas County, uh, Florida. And uh, what I've done here is if I go to edit, we can look at Pinellas County and you can see I've added zip codes to this location here. Uh, that's just my title, Pinellas County. I could call it whatever I want. And I can put any geographic information really in here, like as it says down here, a zip code or a city name and that type of thing. So if you live, you might live in another country and it's uh, Google based on your IP might know, you know, if you don't need to, you, any information you can help Google find, you know, what it's looking for the better. So I could say Toronto, uh, Canada, and then that would be a location that searches automatically. Right. Um, so, okay, so that's set up. Now what I can do is go uh, back here and um, I'll, just, I'll just run through. This is actually optional. You don't have to use a location. You can run the query just like this, real estate agents in 33701, and I can run the scanner and it's gonna do a quick search. And it was very fast because I've actually already searched this zip code today. So right. rather than pulling all that data over again, because you do get, it does go against a, an allotment from Google. Now your chances are you're probably not going to bump up against it too much, but uh, rather than taking all that time to pull all that data again for the same list, it's not, you know, it's just not going to do that because it's already all here. Right. So it saves, saves some resources. Um, let's see. So let's, but if I do a whole new list, it will, It'll pull all those records again. I'll show you what that looks like uh, in a bit. So, uh, so it pulls the records and then um, some bits of information that were, you know, kind of more important as far as what comes from back from the Google Places API. Uh, one is, of course, is how many records do I have? And these are all unique records, so it's going to make sure there's no duplicates, you know, on your list. It lets me know, since I've entered my Twilio API info, it's gonna do the phone type lookup and it's letting me know that 51% of this list is actually mobile numbers. And so this will be different based on what type of niche you're searching. So 
uh, real estate agents are always on their mobile phones. So if they even have, you know, a lot of these are probably offices or whatever, and some are individuals, uh, you know, like this one's probably an office. So they have their landline listed and that's what that means. Uh, this is an individual. So they have their mobile listed. Um, so if you want to reach out to these people based on their phone type, this is a, a good indicator on whether this is a good niche to do that. Um, this also here is how many, what percentage of these people of this list have websites attached to their Google places listing. Uh, so here's one that does not, I mean, I can filter these down as well. Um, so like, for example, if I want to say, show me people that don't have a website. I can filter that list. There's 18 of the 191. These guys do not have a website. I mean, they, they might have a website, but it's not on their Google Places listing. So um, I can click on the little icon here and it'll take me to their to that their actual Google Places listing. And you can see exactly how they're listed um, on those. So this is actually someone's house. Uh, so they don't have <laughs> and it's unclaimed, you know. So um but they have their mobile number there, so it might be worth a phone call. Right. Um, let's see. All right, so um, let me switch this back. Uh, and then finally, this last little bit is letting me know that there's uh, about 19% that have five or less reviews. Uh, these are people that you could help, you know, get. Uh, if that's one of the services you provide. It's a quick way to find people that might need help with their reviews or their rating and that sort of thing. And so I can narrow my list down. I could say, I don't wanna see people that have a mobile number and let's say their rating is less than four or less. So I have a quick list of 10 people uh, to reach out to if that's the service you wanna reach, reach them for. Um, the other thing is you can download all this information very easily. One is I can just click this download icon and it's going to download a CSV which you can then open in you know, Excel or a spreadsheet or import into other systems or whatever you'd like to do. Um, another way to get to the data is click on this icon, which is a copy data, and you get this uh, pop-up that uh, will show you the filtered list that you generated, and you can grab these, um, the various information. So the first box here is the websites that they have listed. So these are the websites of the people we filtered. So if you click the, this copy button, it's going to select and copy into the clipboard. And then I can paste them into something like uh, Zatomba or, uh, for like scanning and getting their email addresses and things like that. Um, or I can just download the list as a text file. Uh, same thing, if you want just their phone numbers for some reason, you can grab those. And then finally, uh, this is the full data list uh, in CSV format. Uh, and you can, again, you can just download that here, or you can just do a, a quick copy for a cop, copy and paste type of operation. So um, let's see, let's reset these. Yeah, I want to get this. And this, should, yeah, this shows you how many records right here, 97, 191, that sort of thing. Uh, and then I can add to this list any time. So I could, I could do, I could do another, um, like, let me just run a zip code here and I can run the scanner. So it's letting me know it's currently scanning, uh, running this query, which is real estate agents and 33777. So I found a few more records um, and I added them uh, to the top of my list here. And uh, so I can then, you know, immediately have access to those. Now, um, finally, probably, uh, well, this was a big piece uh, that was brought into uh, the plugin, which is uh, the voicemail broadcasting um, function. So if I go into here, it's gonna show me uh, an option to, uh, one, pick the Twilio number I wanna send from. So you, again, you need your Twilio account set up. You'll grab the phone number you want the, the um, you know, when you send the voicemails, this is what are the number that shows up in on their phone. Uh, you can drag and drop or upload a, your audio file. Uh, you can type in the URL of it. If it's already out there somewhere, you just want to use a URL, or it will actually show you previously used uh, audio files. 
So I actually create, I, for my testing, all my testing, I recorded a, a quick video or a quick audio that says, hey, sorry, I just realized I dialed the wrong number. And so uh, rather than try to get anyone to call me or whatever. Um, now, this little bit here, this drop down is important because it, you can limit who you send the voicemail to based on the history with that, you know, with this record. So maybe you only want to send, so there's several options. I think they're fairly self-explanatory, but um, the first option is send to all who haven't received this audio. So if this is the list. Uh, and they've not uh, received this audio, um, then I want to go ahead and send it to everyone. So if I've already run this once before, and then I ran, I added some people to my list, and I want to now I want to hit those new people, I can run the voicemail broadcast again, and hit only the new people uh, that have not received this audio. Uh, I can send to all who haven't received any audio on this list, meaning they've never received anything at all, and they're on my list, and I'm going to send only those people. Uh, again, that would work for just you know new records. Uh, send to all who haven't received any audio on any list. So you, there's many times where I've had different lists of the same thing, you know, like multiple lists of real estate agents, and I want to reach out to them through a voicemail drop. Um, but I don't want to. I don't want to contact someone I've already reached. Maybe they're on another list. Um, so this helps me organize uh, in a way that you know that I, I don't have to worry about bugging someone over and over again, you know, because I'm creating multiple lists. This will filter, you know, make it safe to send only to those people. Uh, and then finally, you can just send to the whole list regardless. You know, so if you just if you want to send it to everybody on this list, regardless of if you know you've sent to them before or not or any other list, you can do that as well. So. As long as you know what you're doing, you should be uh, be safe on that one, I guess. Uh, and then finally, there's an option to record the calls. Now, what we're recording isn't really a conversation. What we're recording is what Twilio hears as it's leaving the voicemail. Because one thing to note on this voicemail drop stuff is that it, it only works uh, reliably on mobile phone numbers. So landlines not even an option here. So um, it will only attempt to deliver to mobile phone numbers. Um, and it's probably, I, I haven't done an actual data, you know, statistics on it, but I'm guessing it's probably 80, 80 plus percent delivery rate on, on, you know, voicemails because there's different things like their voice, sometimes their voicemail box is full. Sometimes they're just, it just due to their system, it just doesn't pick up, you know, uh, Sometimes um, their greeting is extra long, you know, and Twilio times out, you know. So it, you run into a, a couple, you run into some circumstances where it, it's just not successful, but um, it is uh, very, very effective, you know. So if you get an 80% delivery rate or so on mobile phones on a, a large list, and you're only paying, this is the other great thing. If, if people have used voicemail drops uh, before, they can be kind of pricey, you know, if you use something like a slide broadcast and you're only going a bit at a time, uh, you're not going in bulk, then you're paying up to 10 cents a, a voicemail. Um, and even on the cheap end, uh, I'd say if you're buying like hundreds of dollars worth a, a month or whatever, you, you get the price down to maybe five cents or so. It's been a while since I've looked at the various ones that are out there, but uh, so you're still dealing with, you know, a, a bit of a, a fee there and they add up. So with Twilio though, you you only pay uh, it's like depending on the length of your voicemail if, it, if the whole process takes under a minute or up to a minute it's like less than a penny you know so you're done with uh, 0 0.75 cents or something like that so it's very inexpensive and very effective so um, finally you can run a test so you can just type your phone number in there and then uh, and then send yourself uh, you know, the hit go and you will hear uh, what they would hear, you know, so um, uh, you, 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 it takes a few minutes sometimes to get the voicemail too, by the way. So don't, so definitely give it some time, uh, test with maybe a couple different uh, phone numbers or that sort of thing. But it, uh, it works for me every time, you know, uh, I'm with Verizon. So I don't know, you know, if my carrier is extra 
whatever just works well. But I find that uh, sometimes certain carriers will have issues, but the major carriers uh, it seem to work really well with. Um, okay, so let's see. Is that, uh, yeah, that was just the one caveat on the voicemail broadcast uh, is that you don't expect it to be 100%, and it might not even work on your phone. And that's okay because it will work on enough phones that you will get your message out and you will get a uh, call depending on depending on the voicemail you leave that's the other key thing which is how you talk to people through a pre-recorded message uh, that that will affect your response rate you know as well so that's important but uh, right. don't don't worry too much if it doesn't work on your particular phone that's a, that's okay right, All right. Um, let's see uh, I could do one I'll start off with one new scan just as a, you know, as a demonstration of kind of what it looks like um, on the fresh start. All right, so I'm just gonna go with real estate agents again, and then I'm going to select my location, Pinellas County that I'd set up. And I'm just gonna go ahead and run the scanner. And these are all the queries that are pending. And so you'll see, uh, it'll just go through one at a time. It's gonna take, it takes a minute or so to go through, depending on how many records are there. Uh, I can refresh and kind of see where we're at. So we're, we're at uh, 20 records currently and the list will keep growing. 33, so you know, it's so obviously I get about 42% so far on the mobile rate. Uh, and then uh, we'll be adding some new features to this. Uh, as well as we go here. So uh, one of the things on my list is, uh, you know, looking at their website, determining, because I'm interested, are they a WordPress? Is their web website on WordPress? You know, so that's fairly easy to determine by doing a quick uh, grab on the, on the URL of their, uh, their website. Right. And then you can stop, you can stop the scanner too, if you just want to, you're just done, or you just, maybe you want to change something, whatever, you can stop all that. And that, uh, that is, uh, I think I've, I think I've covered everything. Let me know if I left yeah. anything out. If you have any questions. You did. You did. So let me, uh, uh, okay. What's the, can let me, that, are you there? I guess now we're here back. Okay. Excellent. Right. So, um, <clears throat> let me guys, uh, quickly go through. Thank you so much chat for going through everything. You know, pretty sure that was a really nice explanation. Anybody who doesn't get, you know, how the plugin works with that explanation um, may never understand it, probably. But guys, uh, the uh, the point, the reason why we, you know, why why I actually reached out to chat was because we were bringing this Tom deal. I, I don't know if you guys remember, which has uh, the ability to find the email addresses and the LinkedIn, you know, messages of of any domain, right? Of anybody who works you know in that company you, you type in the company name it gives you the email addresses of the people who work there as well as their LinkedIn profile is the Twitter you know all that stuff the question was people are asking me if I'm looking for local real estate agents in my area when I want to find out you know that I want to email them or you know reach out to them on LinkedIn how do I do like I don't know the name of the company that I want to go after so then then I reached out to Chad and said, hey, Chad, I know that you have a, you know, a plugin that does this, but can we, can we customize it and have it, you know, in a way that is uh, appropriate, you know, for the use case in which we're looking for. And he was, uh, you know, really busy guy. So we had to go back and forth and finally we agreed to do it. And it took him um, probably four weeks now was it four weeks ago uh, around four weeks something like that something like that we we uh we took it from i funny uh because i you know i, I got it to a certain point i said hey look here it is and you're like ah, oh, you're gonna need to do some more work on that <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, um, so we made it much more user friendly and that process there's a lot of detail and and what we did and we I put a lot of time into it so but i'm happy to do it so and good, yeah, we, 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 we made sure it's all, you know, good, and it's working fine. So I want to go show you guys two things. The pricing, I have already shown you how it works with Tomba. I'll come back to show that. And the other thing is, if somebody has issues with, how do they reach out to you? Do you have a support link on your website? Yes. yes. Uh, the account, the website, 
localleadscanner.com. Mm -hmm. uh, when you get into your account, there's a, a messenger chat bot. And so it will, right now there's not many, op it basically it's just immediately start chatting with me if you have a question or need help. Uh, there will be some more automated things set up here in the next uh, few days and weeks uh, for answering maybe common questions and things like that. But yeah, that that is uh, the best way to uh, reach out. Right. And then um, as, uh, yeah, so, and then my my email, you know, also works, but it's probably best to to go through the chat bot for you know to not get okay so let's go let's let's go through the pricing quickly i'm going to share my screen here uh let me see what this looks like uh share the screen for a second that is my screen so kill this one now you can see my screen i guess so let's go to the pricing guys and then we'll answer all your questions those are the two points i'm getting some notifications here close them all and let's go to digital think and if you go there a lot of you guys are asking for the link of course it's right here uh inside on the top page you know on the it's featured here when you click on that one you should be able to see this is the uh the website right and i mean the landing page for this and it you know it kind of gives explanation on how the different features work a little bit here and there and then we go down to the pricing. So there are three pricings. And I use the word site license because in every deal you only get one license which can be activated on different websites. So how does it work? This is a WordPress plugin, okay? And when you get it, you activate this on your website, on your WordPress website. Even if you don't have one, you can just set up a simple one, right? Uh, just for the sake of the plugin. And then once you do that, two things you need to fit it to work. First one is you have to have a Google API. Without that, it's not going to work. So to create one, there are instructions and it shows you that it, it's all done in a video as well as in writing. So it's very straightforward, very clear. The second thing is um, there is, uh, you know, the second plan. So that's $79, very good deal. You get unlimited leads and send unlimited voicemails depending on you know how much you want to spend from your google api or from your twilio account no limits on that 79 dollars one website really good price you know and you're good to go you have a lifetime li you know license and any updates that come with the plugin you get it you know this plugin is not going anywhere i i can assure you um that i have used uh, you know charts uh, plugins and they are more than 10 years old and they still work yeah if you go and search and you know google his name and you will find out and talk up talk about you know uh, lead finder plugin you'll find there uh, are some posters about it some 10 years ago and people are talking about it and i can assure you it still works to some extent to this day and you know he still has the website for it you can check out profitableplugins.com and all his, um, his, his plugins to this day still work. So that's why you're getting a lot of value for this one. So $79, one site license, and you generate as many you know, records as you want. You generate as many, you know, no limits. We have no limits. It's all the same, right? Now, if you feel like you want to grab five site licenses, which is you know, reasonable also, you only need to add $120 more and you're good to go. Now, when we say side licenses, just so you, side license, it means you have to, uh, it only, you only use one license. Now, that license is connected to your, uh, I think to your login, right? Is that, is that right, Chad? If you, yes. Yeah, so a license, when you, uh, you get a license key. Right. And that key will have the ability for either one, five, or 10. And different installations on different websites. Exactly, and uh, that is attached to your your account, your e with your email address. So you will. That's how you activate your each each installation. Excellent. And the other one is ten licenses. So that's three hundred dollars. So if you feel like now you want to give this to your clients, so your client has you know this kind of access on their website and set it up for them, they can use it definitely. This is what these licenses are for. Right. One thing, one thing I forgot, one thing I left out uh, yeah. actually, which is interesting, 
uh, which is really cool, is uh, the plugin, you can use it on the back end in the WordPress admin area. Yeah. But you can also use it on the front end um, uh, with the short code. You know, so uh, you can protect it with a membership plugin if you want to do that. You could set it up at, you know, on different websites uh, under different brands and niches and things like that. Or, or like you said, for clients specifically, um, where um, you can allow access in a way that's more, um, whatever, through a membership, you know, user friendly type of, of interface. So uh, that's so, optional, but it's, it's all built into the same. It's all the same plugin. Actually, so I had a question for you on that because I remember we talked about this. Let me... Uh show my face again just so people can see can see us okay so um i remember discussing with you on that of course i know that it's it's front end right now but last time when we did it did did, did the clients have to also enter their own uh api key yes they currently do uh that's one of the, as far as each each user uh, right would enter their own google places api key twilio api key right um, you know that that information is at the user level right so uh one of the things we discussed adding in the mm -hmm. in, in the next one of the next features that'll be added to this right. will be let's say you want to make it easier for for the your user and you're just going to let them use your google places api key exactly. uh then you know if you're charging you know a monthly fee or something like that then uh, that would cover, you know, and then you could, uh, well, the other thing we'd probably want to add is limit, you know, how many queries they can run. Yes, we, we're going to, gonna, yeah, so we talk yeah. about that. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to come back to you on that. Everything. Yes, yeah. so d definitely. So with the current setup right now, you can set it up on the same WordPress page on on, a, on any page and then give anybody access to go and try it without getting to the back end of the, of the plugin, without seeing your licenses. You can yeah. create a you know a random page and, and then people just throw in the short code. Then they'll have access to the plugin. They can set up their own API key, their own Twilio, and they can use it from there, which is one way of doing things. But then the other option that we have been discussing was where you can technically run this as a software, as a service, you know, and then you, you put in your own API key, you put in your own Twilio, but you set limits uh, based on different... Um, you know, limits and, and give pricing. So when people get access, then they have access to that specific page of, of a membership that only lets them this limit. That's the next step that we're working on. We'll come up with the idea. I mean, we'll come up with, with the plan on this. Um, but for now, what you get is what you get. But that's our next step. So because the, the, the plugin was developed based on all the different recommendations we've been you know, talking about, our first, you know, priority was to get leads. Local leads, very important. Most people search local businesses, right? And so if you're working with anything, this is it. Secondly, was to make sure that we can find which uh, email, which phone numbers to voice drop. And then we included the voice drop feature as part of the plugin, right? This was actually came after. Initially, we were, we're not planning on doing that. Then the, 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 the other thing is now, you know, how you can use this on a different level. So uh, now if you're buying... We'll, we'll come up with that feature that we talk about where the front end, we still have to talk about how that's going to be integrated and how it's going to work. But for now, we have beautiful deal, $79, you know, one website for yourself. Use that with the different pages within your website. That's, that's good to go. The other deal is only, uh, you know, $199. We get five websites and then $299. And they're all across the same, you know, no limits for now. If there'll be limits on anything, we'll announce them within the next few days, depending on what type you may need to access some of the features we are trying to add because these things cost, you know, and they're not cheap. And, you know, $79 is going to take time to add up to make uh, any good money for the developer to depend on. So we'll, uh, that other feature that we just talked about, the SaaS version, might be an upsell. We still haven't decided the details, but maybe those who buy the five licenses can get it as a bonus you know or the 10 licenses i don't know right now i will get back to you on that but for those whatever you see right now is for leads for voice drop unlimited no limits that's the value we'll come back with that other feature that's if you want to now make money as uh, a success you know like on your website and you set it up and now you're 
uh, renting your website to others so they can use your Twilio and your mm -hmm. Google API. So this is this is this is the smart thing to do. Okay, so any questions? Now we get back to the questions and we answer them. Uh, and the questions we have here, they're all coming here. Where is the link for the sales page? On the website, digitalthing.io. It's right there. And okay, hello, brother. Thank you. So I sell credit card processing in Columbus, Ohio. How would you begin getting leads for that niche? It's a question. Yeah. Uh, one is think about, is there a specific niche that works is a good target for your, what you, you that you would be a good customer for you. Right. Then I would look at um, running a scan, and then I I like using I like targeting people with mobile. You know, the, it's just easy to reach them um, through the voicemail drop, or um, if you dare to even send a text, maybe. Um, uh, I don't even know the rules, um, the different laws. That's up to you as far as business to business texting. I think is maybe more open than say business to consumer but um definitely than business to consumer but uh you can choose on how you want to reach out to people i've done both and i've got you know good results of being able to connect with people that's usually the number one problem is connecting with someone getting someone on the phone or getting some sort of connection with them and by really the mobile is really the best way to do it uh so I would uh, I would run scans on various niches that are good for what you're you're providing, and then find them find ones that have a decent number of mobile you know results you know and, and doesn't have, it doesn't even have to be a lot even if you get because you could it just depends on how many people how what kind of area you can target and that sort of thing and and then uh, and then just hit hit those mobile you know mobile devices you know right. I think would be a great way to pretty quickly potentially generate some some interest or get some people on the phone yeah excellent yeah that's definitely a good point so if you know who you're selling to just search them locally if they're restaurants you know search restaurants and find out which ones have it but that's not the only thing you don't stop at just the text messages remember you have tomba right now which is a deal that lets you also find not only the emails but also the linkedin profiles of who owns that restaurant which is amazing just send a message right find them on facebook yeah. You know, there's so many ways. Like right now, yeah. things are so easy to to you know yeah. connect. Yeah, with the uh, yeah, like you said, with generating. Well, if you if you do use Tumba, then you can um, yeah generate that big list of URLs um, and copy and paste it in there through the bulk uh, search, and then uh, go from there. Uh, so uh, <laughs> George Graham is saying, turn your microphone down, Muhammad Yaz. You're uh, breaking my speakers, dude. Okay, no problem, brother. That's what's going to happen. That's the Aston Steel. You know, it works. Uh, I took a risk on it. So, uh, and the other one now, there's a lot of questions coming. Wow. So, is it possible to scan without Google API? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> Absolutely not, right? And uh, That's a good question. So, will this allow for ringless voicemails? what the way the way it works is essentially it's 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 kind of ringless and kind of not the way just technically the way this works is the way for example if you've ever used sly broadcast which is yeah. kind of popular mm -hmm. it's the same process they use which is uh two phone calls go out at the same time one maybe a second after the other one and the first one ties up the phone for just a couple seconds. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's long enough to cause the phone to kind of light up and maybe ring for a second or buzz or whatever. Not all the time, but it'll, it'll engage the phone. Then the second phone call comes right behind it. And then that one bounces straight into voicemail usually. <laughs> right. So um, that is how uh, these systems, some of these systems actually work. Not all of them. Some of them do some other fancy stuff by like going directly somehow into the voicemail. I don't, I don't even know how that works. Right. But this is a this is a process that that works pretty well, you know. So uh, whether it's technically ringless, technically probably not. Although it doesn't ring, 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 ring their phone. It just is a blip, and then it's gone. And so most of the time, people don't even notice it or it'll show up as a missed call which with your number with the number which is good because then they can just call you right back or 
I listen to the voicemail and you know that sort of thing. So. Yeah, I seen the yeah. It, it rings like for a second, and then it just uh -huh. goes into the voicemail. You can't answer yeah. it honestly. It's so fast. It just you know. Right. So it's so like ring is, but ringless. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. How many Google API calls is included? I don't know what that means. Um, so oh, that that would be on the Google site. I I don't know off the top of my head. I know it's it's thousands of calls for free, you know, um, and thousands more for a fraction. You know, it's very inexpensive. You know, you can you can do hundreds and hundreds or thousands and thousands of these searches and queries, uh, and not ever have any kind of problem with you know pricing or that. So I don't think I've ever been charged by Google for any of this. I've run quite a few, All right. it, you know, it depends on, it's probably resets each month and, you know, things like that. But if you, if you go Google, you know, what their pricing is, you might be able to find it, but it's so low. I've never even looked into it. Really. Yeah. I, I've never been charged for it too. I use it a lot of it. So can we use cold voice mail drops on B2B basis in California? Yeah, you'd have to ask an attorney on that one. I don't know. Um, uh, I always say, uh, you know, the, you know, the standard answer would be, you know, you got to research your local laws or et cetera. And I'm not an attorney and I don't know. But uh, in general, I'm finding, at least in my area, places I've actually researched, B2B calls are completely different than, you know, than a business to consumer, you know. Um, and then there is some restrictions on various, you know, depending on what you're selling. I think it's, you know, it's kind of weird, but I've never run into an issue with any of these things. And as long as you're not being annoying and, you know, then I don't think there's anything to worry about. But again, that's just my own opinion, uneducated, you know, right. that it may be. <laughs> yeah. So business to business, I don't know, even here in Canada, we have a lot of, uh, you know, tough law when it comes to the consumer side of things. But when it comes to businesses, that's definitely nobody sees it. Yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, I don't think you get into issues with this. I mean, they have I, their, their phone number publicly listed on Google. Yeah, yeah it's on because Google we're using Google. public data, nothing private here. Yeah, yeah, so that makes a lot of sense. I'm not sure about the Australian law. Hopefully the local, oh, that I have no idea. Local spam law, mm. spamming laws, right? So it's different. I'm not sure. Uh, no short codes, please. Why not? Uh, oh no, it, 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 it's short code, right? You don't have blocks for, for WordPress. No, block. No, no. It's just a simple word. It's a simple short code copy paste. Mm, yeah. Uh, Carlos, uh, we're doing only 10 websites because the thing is we're not limiting anything. We, we would have, we could have made it like one website, get only one location. And then the next one, you know, we could have made it really restricted, but we made it just very generous limits you have it and i think you know having more than 10 is, is you don't need that many installations this is wordpress right and why do you want to have 10 different websites hosted when you can have just uh, uh 10 10 installation i mean 10 i mean 10 installations is a lot right? it's a lot so uh, can you add okay. yeah say that again so they're saying there's a there's a service called emito i don't know what it is to send S SMS messages. I don't know what that is. Okay. Um, yeah, I sometimes I have people ask, can you integrate with this service or that service or whatever? <laughs> and really, it's really too much to right. try to take on for, for myself right now, um, unless it's some sort of huge savings or maybe it, it's they provide something that, that Twilio does not, then I might look at it. You know, I, I looked at SignalWire because of the pricing and because of, uh, the Canadian phone number data. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I did want to mention on um, the short code. Uh, keep in mind that when you're plugging this into your website, it can look different in it based on your website. <laughs> so right. uh, on the back end, everything's pretty much the same. It l looks the same, but uh, sometimes you have, I've come across websites with really narrow, you know, content areas so you got to make sure that you put it on a page as a wide wide you know, page. full width mm -hmm. type stuff uh to give it room you know things like that and you might get some unexpected for the most part of the things i've tested it all works it's just sometimes it's 
you just know, it's really the width is mostly that's usually the issue. Sometimes I come across themes that are very narrow and you have to work around that. There are you can download other templates too for pages that will make it work better. So right. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. What about okay? The, I think those are most of the questions that people had, and it's coming to you. Yeah, we have only a few minutes left. And uh, any other questions? I don't see. Can we use no? All right. Any other questions here? Hmm. Most questions have been asked. I guess. Yeah, we'll do more demos and come back and you know talk about this more. And we have a long time <laughs> in the next few weeks. So, guys, here's what what happens. We have. I think we have about hundred licenses, right? for each each plan that's how we run if we run out of those licenses right now you get an additional 10 percent discount it's always built this into the pricing and um, if you get that 10 percent discount right now which is you know if we sell those 100 licenses for each plan then the 10 percent discount which comes with every single deal we bring on our platform dies because that's it the first hundred of every plan comes with the if we finish that, then definitely we will, uh, you know, we'll, we can extend the deal, but it will not have that 10% discount. So it all depends if everybody buys now 10, 20. And I, I realize they sell very fast. So for the first, uh, for the first 100 you know, clients for every single deal, uh, we will always give you that 10%. I think that's how we're going to keep it. Uh, other than that, I guess we have all the questions. And George Graham has been coming back and watching this like crazy. <laughs> so we'll end it there. And um, any more questions, uh, we can probably answer them in our next session. Thank you so much, uh, chat. And yeah, thank um, you. And, yeah. All right, great. Yeah, okay. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate thank it. You. Okay, bye. I'll see you.